Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Spinal Tap in the five-minute pool on ICC. I think this is International Master Tom Bartell from Connecticut, maybe? Something like that. Pennsylvania? Somewhere on the East Coast. Solid player. I've played him in the U.S. Chess League before, so he's not a completely unfamiliar name to me. I think he and I have similar styles, actually. I think we're both kind of more positionally-minded players. So... Sometimes it's boring to play against someone with like the same style as you, but it can also be seen as a challenge. So let's see what happens. He's playing the London system. Bishop f5 is not working here because he can take, and if I take b2, he can just move his rook. I could play g6 and then try to go bishop f5, but I can also play bishop g4 and kind of wiggle my bishop around. I think I'm going to do that. He might play b3 very quickly and try to undermine my pawn on c4. I was a little bit worried about that, but maybe this is okay. Yeah, this should be fine for both sides. So I'll go e6 and prepare development. Maybe rook c8 I can throw in, just to try to scare him with knight b4. He's got a pretty high rating, 2492. My rating, also not doing bad lately in the five-minute pool. All right, and he saw knight b4 pretty clearly. Hmm. I'm half tempted to play bishop f5, even though it kind of wrecks my structure a bit. I really want to get that light square bishop off the board. I think I'm going to do it. Yeah, let's give it a shot. This looks like a, a reverse of strategy, but this structure is not terrible for black. You saw me do this in the game against Gil Popilski, Grandmaster Kuru Mania in a Slav, and I think the structure is actually pretty reasonable. Okay, knight e4 maybe? Just bishop e7. Knight e4 hits uh, the pawn on c3, so I kind of like that option. I could play queen b5 and try to disrupt his castling. But that doesn't seem right somehow. Okay, let's go knight e4. I'm just curious how he's going to react to the attack on c3. If he takes, I get to take and straighten out my pawn, so... That's got to be worth something. Queen b5 would stop him from castling, but again, there's that c4 move. All right, let's just complete our development now. We're both going to castle. He might be able to undermine these pawns, but I have played down the c file. If ever he plays c4, he does give me the b4 square from my knights. Although I have to watch queen takes a7, wouldn't I? Maybe c4 is not bad right now for him. It's probably okay. Yeah, actually c4 would pose me some issues. Because I can't even play rook f d8. I'm glad he didn't play that. Um, what's his plan? Why queen a4? Is it just preparation for this move? Hmm. Okay, I'm going to back my queen off. I'm not liking it on b6 anymore. <laughs> I know he can play c4 even still, but I think I need reliable protection of d5. That's my whole point with this. Hmm. Yeah, let's play bishop b4. Get the bishop in to attack that knight. He might take, and then after queen takes d5, play knight c4, but at least I'm defending e4 then. It looks all right. Not sure about c4. I don't think that was the best move for him. Rook d2. Hmm. A6, maybe? Okay. Yeah, let's just do A6. Make sure this knight no longer has to defend the A-pawn. Hmm. There's still this issue of the tension on, on D5. Which I would like to relieve at some stage. 
Now he's threatening to take and then take on c6. So does this force my hand? Can I play b5? b5 does not quite work, I don't think. I'm spending a lot of time here, I know. What about queen a5? Queen a5 take, knight takes. Let's do that. I can still take d5, though, but I take d2. He takes c6, then. I'm not sure who's coming out on top there. Rook takes c6 at the end. It's a little tough to evaluate. Hmm. That just drops a piece, though. Yeah, that was... Total blunder by him. Yeah, he resigned immediately. Hmm. Well, abrupt ending to that one. <laughs> I would have liked for him to play some different moves so we could have had a more interesting struggle. But, hey, blunders happen. Yeah, so if C takes D5, what is going on here? Let's calculate. There's even, like, knight takes D4 discovered attack ideas. So C takes D5, knight takes D4, hitting the rook on C2. If rook takes e8, I have knight e2 check in between move. That might be strong for me. Because if c takes d5, queen takes d5, then he has rook takes c6. And if I take his rook, he takes on b4. Which is the tactic I mentioned, a move prior to queen a5. Anyways, let's go back and look at this and see. So this is a London system, bishop f4. In fact, I think if white is going to play the London, this is their most accurate move order. Getting the bishop out to f4 right away. A lot of people play knight f3 first and then bishop f4, but there's certain advantages to doing this. Like, for one thing, let's say black plays knight f6, then white can go e3 and try to follow with c4 and obtain some better version of a queen's gambit declined or a slav. This happened to me against Kristoff. Kristoff Selecki, Chess explained, in our match. He used this move order and he won a nice game. He like completely strangled me and crushed me. So I learned my lesson here and played c5, which is kind of like a queen's gambit reverse now. Like white wasn't playing c4, so I'm playing c5 myself. White could take the pawn, but then I get to play e6 and look to recover it with bishop takes c5. If b4, I'll start undermining with a5, or even actually queen f6 might be good, attacking both of these. So white just defended the pawn on d4. Knight c6, e3. I pop the queen out to b6, helping to defend this and also attacking b2. Queen b3. Now, I played c4 and he did not take on b6, you notice. This structure is usually good for black, in my experience, because one plan is just b5, b4, trying to offload the pawn. And the play that black gets down the a file compensates for the structural deficit that we have right now. So after c4, he just dropped the queen back to c2. And I played knight f6. I, I wonder if I could have played bishop f5 right here, actually. Because I mentioned the bishop f5 move, but I think I only mentioned it a move later after knight f6, knight d2. This is sometimes playable. Yeah, it looks like I could do it because if he takes, then I take b2 and he's going to lose that rook in the corner. You do have to watch for queen c8. I'd, I'd mentioned this before, but I once played a game where my knight was still on b8 and I got checkmated with queen c8 in doing this. That was not fun. But um, I don't know. This this would be an interesting line. Now the engine's saying queen takes d5. Checking on c1 doesn't appear to do anything. After king e2, so take here. And now queen b5, defending the knight. This looks Actually, this looks dangerous for black now that I get a glimpse of this position. This is loose. C4 will probably fall, and my queen is kind of trapped, isn't it? Okay, in that case, I'm glad I didn't go for bishop f5. That looks kind of risky. I play just, yeah, knight f6. e5 is also possible, huh? Ah, so the idea with e5 is that if white takes, then we play bishop f5. And the difference is, after takes, there's no queen takes d5. He's blocked from doing that. And that shifts the evaluation in favor of black. Yeah, another move I didn't consider at all, but 
I'll have to keep that in mind. Also, it's helpful to keep in mind that bishop f5, when white can win the d5 pawn subsequently, could be advantageous for white, and black may want to avoid that, even though I get to win the rook on a1. So I played knight f6, knight d2, bishop g4. I had in mind this maneuver of the bishop to g6 eventually. I think g6 was another move that crossed my mind, trying to go bishop f5. And he challenged my c4 pawn with b3. I took, he took. I played e6. He played bishop d3. Rook c8, so this introduces knight b4 because his c pawn would be pinned. So he wisely sidestepped with his queen. Yeah, now I made the kind of curious decision to play bishop f5. In hindsight, this maybe created more problems for me than it's worth because my central structure became rather fragile after this. But I think the idea of exchanging bishops is fine. Maybe I should just do it more slowly with bishop h5 to g6. <laughs> this is why looking at your games with an engine and also thinking on your own is helpful because look at this move the engine is suggesting here. Bishop b4. Not even on my radar whatsoever. In a longer game, I might have looked at that move. But, <laughs> I mean... Okay, what is the point of bishop b4? So if he takes it... I'm taking with my knight on b4, forking the queen and the bishop. But then what about queen a4 check? Just king e7, something like that. And <laughs> maybe I do have enough threats, like knight takes d3, and if the bishop moves like to e2 or something, there's knight c2. It's kind of nifty. Oh, this is not the idea. Queen a4 check, check although this is equal somehow. King d8, bishop e2, and I get this check in. Instead, the engine wants to go e5. C takes b4, e5. Hmm. So if take, now knight takes b4, probably some subtlety based on the move order. It's helpful to have gotten e5 for some reason. <laughs> check. Queen a4 check. Ah, I guess because my bishop can come back to d7. All this is very easy to find in Blitz. <laughs> of course not. Um, yeah, I mean, engines are, are really good at coming up with remarkably tactical and concrete solutions to positions. So, yeah, bishop b4. That would have been a heck of a move. I guess the only downside is white doesn't have to take it. Yeah, they could play rook c1, just play something solid. But I played bishop f5, looking for this trade. Yeah, and I say that my pawns became fragile because I, I particularly had trouble with d5, which never had reliable pawn protection. Once I've committed to this plan of trading bishops, this pawn always has to be defended by another piece. So, knight e2. I do gain um, a nice foothold on e4, but I'm not sure it was worth it. Probably not. Yeah, knight e4, I was attacking c3, but he simply took and then retreated the knight back to d2. It felt like this position was slightly more pleasant for white. I feel like my pawns are a bit overextended, even though I have clarified the structure. And I would rather be white here, just by like a hair. It seems like he just has more convenient like pawn levers to attack this structure. This play down the A file is nice. He has one uh, connected pawn island, whereas I have two pawn islands. So queen A4. And now I played the queen back to D8. The move I was worried about here was b4 i think or was it c4 i think it was c4 attacking this pawn and if i play like rook fd d8 to defend then he can take and then knight takes e4 and i just lose a pawn so on c4 i probably would have had to find queen d8 defending here in which case black looks okay again because c4 is a little double-edged he does attack d5 but he loses control over b4 so instead he played queen a4 I dropped the queen back. Maybe not best, but I felt like my queen was misplaced. So I moved it away, guarding d5. And here, queen b5 is suggested by the computer, attacking b7. And it definitely likes white after this by a bit. So c4, and now I made use of the b4 square, coming in with the bishop, attacking the knight. He defended with rook a2. 
Knight takes e4 is playable. Probably because white would play d5 thereafter. And then if my knight moves, I would lose the bishop. But that just looks kind of like a, a fancy trade. Yeah, black's okay here. Equal material. So instead, rook a2 was played. I see g5 has been suggested a couple times by the computer, but again, not a move that I was thinking about. It's hard to, like, switch sides in your head. You know, I'm playing predominantly on the queen side and in the center, and suddenly something like g5 pops up on the engine eval. A computer has no prejudices, so it's not going to have a hard time finding a move like g5 if it's good. But for a human, it's hard to, like, completely shift wings in a blitz game. So yeah, this g5, bishop g3, f5 idea is trying to enforce f4 and take the play onto the other flank. It's interesting. I'm not sure what a6 really does. I mean, I, it felt like a move that I just wanted to play to free up my knight from having to defend a7. And I thought in some cases maybe b5 could be helpful. And here he played rook c2. c takes d4. c takes d5 rather is better according to the engine. And then if I take... Knight c4 coming in with the knight, also threatening knight b6. What if b5? Still knight b6, threatening the queen. Take, take, take b3, take a6. And white is better in the ensuing complications. So he played rook c2, and I played queen a5. I was happy with this move. This seemed like a good idea. I'm attacking d2 and also offering a trade. However, I wish I would have looked at c takes d5 in more detail before I played this. So here's where white blundered the game away. It was c5 allowing bishop takes d2, just winning a piece. So I think the critical line would be c takes d5. Now, I was looking at knight takes d4. I wonder how this pans out. Opening up the attack on the rook. And if rook takes c8, my plan was knight e2 check in between move. King here. And then regain the rook. Queen takes a5, bishop takes a5, knight takes e4 at the end. Uh, black's down a pawn. Yeah. Okay, so maybe that's not working out how I would like it to. So better is to trade the queens first, and then do knight takes d4. Okay. Then after rook takes c8, knight e2 check. check, king here, take... So this is a better version, because even though he goes knight takes e4, it looks like with the queens off the board, I maybe have a chance to exploit my queenside majority. Take, take, rook c4. Attacking the knight, also the pawn behind it. f3, f5. Maybe I even win the pawn back somehow. Knight g5, bishop d6. Yeah, there's pawn weaknesses for white. And black's chances are maybe slightly higher. So I didn't calculate all of that by any means when I played queen a5. But on c takes d5, there is this tactical operation with knight takes d4 looming because of the undefended nature of that rook on c2. So I would have looked at knight takes d4 and maybe queen takes a4 first. Because again, if I play queen takes d5, I'm inviting this move. Trying to get at the bishop on b4. Okay, so short game, but hopefully hopefully you guys picked out a, a thing or two from that one. This might be helpful if you ever face d4, d5, bishop, f4, which is a pretty challenging way for white to open the London system, I think. So, hope you guys enjoyed this one. And thank you guys for watching, as usual. I'll be back again soon with another video. Talk to you guys later. Bye.